Hi, my name is Tiani. I'm the Chief Stakeholder Officer at Sampra. I'm responsible for marketing. Uh, Sampra is a collective management organization, which means that we collect license fees on behalf of recording artists and record companies. We then take those license fees and we pay them as royalties to the recording artists. Sampra is what you call a collective management organization. There are a number of collective management organizations in the world and we are part of those organizations. In South Africa, you have an, also a number of collective management organizations. As Sampra, we are a collective management organization that is responsible for a music right called Needle Time. There are a number of rights as well that are administered in the country, such as performing rights, mechanical rights, and as Sampra, we are responsible for needle time rights. Uh, what is needle time rights? Needle time right is the right of the recording artist as well as the record company to get remuneration whenever their tracks are played in public. So when we talk about in public, we're talking about when the tracks are played in restaurants, in malls, in public spaces, in broadcasting. So anyone who uses music in public spaces um, and in terms of uh, needle time rights, those tracks must have been commercially released uh, for them to be, um, to be able to get needle time rights royalties. So if you're an artist and your music is played at retail stores, in malls, in clubs, in airlines, and in broadcast productions, um, you are supposed to register with Sampra and get the time rights royalties. Um, why it's important to register with CMOs? If you're a recording artist, uh, why you would need to register with Sampra? It's because if your music is being played, then you need to get compensated for your music. So it's another revenue stream, basically. Um, and to register with, with Sampra means that you're going to get music royalties, whereas if you're not registered with either us or Sampra or Capasso, you're missing out on those, royal, on those royalties that you would be getting. So if, for example, you are a singer-songwriter, it means you would then register with Sampra so that you can get needle time rights. You would register with Samro so that you can get your performing rights royalties. You would register with Capasso so that you can get your mechanical rights royalties. So it's basic, it basically means that if you register with all the three CMOs, you are able to get additional revenue in addition to the revenue that you would get from selling your music, from performing, and from exploiting your music in other areas. So in terms of Sampra, um, if you are a recording artist, um, you cannot, for example, say your record company will collect your royalties on your behalf. You would need to register directly with Sampra to be a member. We do not pay uh, royalties to third parties, and that's just to avoid um, performers' money is falling into the wrong hands. So for example, if a performer asked us to pay their record company their royalties, we wouldn't be in a position to do that because even our MOI forbids us from paying the record company share to the performer or the performer share to the record company. So the recording artist would need to register directly with us to be a member so that whenever their music is played, they're able to collect their needle time royalties from us directly. So what would happen is that every time their track is being played, we would pay the record company share to the record company, which is 50% of whatever is collected, and we take 50% of the money collected on that particular track and pay it to the recording artist. When we talk about royalty-free music, we're talking about music that basically the, the users of that music are basically saying we do not want to pay royalties um, and so we're going to, but we still want music in our establishments. So we're basically going to use music that 
does not necessitate us paying royalties. And I think the danger of having that stance as a South African company is that it deprives artists of their right to earn additional income on their music. The disadvantage for recording artists especially, um, I mean, it, this would also affect composers, it would also affect publishers, it would also affect uh, record companies. But I think with specific emphasis on recording artists is that they would not be able to get music royalties. So if an artist, for example, is a composer and is also a performer, what they used to get from, for example, from Sampra, from Samro, from Capasso, that income automatically gets depleted because if institutions start using royalty-free music, it means they will not be paying for royalties. So that revenue stream dries up for a singer, for a songwriter, for a publisher, for a recording company. Um, and I mean, we all know the challenges that South African artists face. And we don't need another device or usage that then takes away that revenue stream from the artist. So I think, I mean, as organizations, as institutions, as business, we do have a moral ob obligation to protect the interests of the artist. Um, these are a group of people that dedicate their lives to ensuring that we get entertainment, we get to use music in our establishments to improve the ambience of those businesses. And so when you take that um, revenue stream away from the artist, what are we saying? Are we saying that music is good enough for us to listen to, to enjoy in our homes? Because, I mean, you won't pay royalties if you play music in your home. But that it's not good, the music is not good enough for us to pay for it in our businesses. So I think there is a moral dilemma there in so far as business is concerned, that why would establishments be comfortable to take money from artists? Because I mean, the artists also buy from retailers, they buy and support these institutions. But why would the same institutions not see a need to support the artists? So I think for us, really, the concern is on the fact that business does not want to reciprocate what the artist is already doing. That is supporting their businesses, buying their products. But I think also as businesses, there is an obligation to support local. I mean, for any entity, any industry to be sustainable, there needs to be a continuous injection uh, of money into that industry. So when establishments decide to go royalty-free uh, music, they are taking away the sustainability part of the music industry. I mean, it is correct that business is about profit, but business is also about sustainability. Um, business does not exist for business alone. Business exists also to support the communities around them, to also ensure that there is sustainability. Business has a, a responsibility towards the people that they service uh, to ensure that the communities around them are able to thrive and are able to succeed in their own right. I mean, we know that uh, we always talk about corporate social responsibility because we understand that business cannot exist only to make profit. Business also has a corporate uh, social responsibility, which means that business has a responsibility to ensure that the social space in which they exist um, is supportive of the communities around them. And the music industry is a community and business has an obligation 
uh, a moral obligation to ensure that that community, that industry is able to be profitable, to exist within the business ecosystem. Everyone is an activist. Um, I believe that everyone ought to be an activist. So if, I mean, in, in every sphere of our lives, whether it's in politics, whether it's in causes that we believe in, uh, everyone should be an activist. I mean, when organizations decide not to pay license fees, basically to use the artist music without, the, without ensuring that they pay license fees. Artists ought to revolt against that because it is their property that is being used illegally. When establishments decide uh, to use royalty-free music, I think artists ought to revolt against that because it is their revenue stream that is being taken away. So I think the role of artists, and I think artists are well positioned because of the space that they already occupy within society. They are the mouthpiece of society. I mean, music transforms, music speaks. Music is exactly that. Music is a revolution. So I think artists should use the, those platforms to speak out against either organizations that use music and do not pay, and also organizations that want to take, you know, um, opportunities away from them, such as organizations that use royalty-free music. Because at the end of the day, artists will be directly impacted by those decisions, whether it is a decision not to pay, but to continue to use music, which is illegal, or those organizations that decide that rather than paying and empowering artists, they would rather not do that, but would rather go royalty free. So I think, I mean, um, artists should uh, take their roles as mouthpieces of society to use those platforms to impact change in their industry. I think, I mean, as uh, artists, recording artists, composers, publishers, record companies, I think it's important to take your craft seriously. It's important to register with um, CMOs to ensure that you get your, the revenue that is due to you. Registration is free with the CMOs. Um, all you do is to contact the CMOs directly, contact SAMPRA directly, um, we are very active on social media. If you have any questions related to us as an organization or related to the music industry, whether you want to invite us to workshops, we're always available to assist and to support. You can contact us. And yeah, I think the most important thing is to ensure that you don't only want to be a superstar to perform on stage, to be a big name, but you also understand the business side of the music, which is very important. Know what you're supposed to be getting. So for example, in terms of royalties, understand which organization deals with which royalties, what you are, what you are entitled to, read your contracts before you sign anything, make sure that you understand what you're signing up for, make sure that you are not only chasing fame, uh, because fame will come and fame will go, but if you sign any document, make sure you understand what you're signing for. I think in terms of royalty fees, it's important that you register. I think I cannot emphasize this enough. It's important that you register with the relevant CMOs so that you are able to expand your revenue pool. So it's all good and well that you always get money when you are booked, you get performance fees. But what happens if your music is on high rotation um, on the different broadcast platforms? You could be making a lot of money from royalty fees. But if you're not registered with the different CMOs, then you're not able to access that money. And that money is due to you. I mean, we collect from a number of music users who have licenses. And 
we collect so that we can pay that money over to you as recording artists, as record companies. So make sure that you register, make sure that you understand uh, the business side of, of, of music and not only the entertainment side.